Clara Jackson is someone who works very hard at finding the best thing there is about the worst things that ever happened. I'll give you an example. About maybe four years ago now, it was announced that I had cancer. Well, I didn't even know anybody who had cancer. When they ask you that question when you go to the hospital for something and they said, anybody in your family, and what did they had? Nobody had had cancer. But now we could put on, yeah, we've got somebody in the family who has cancer. I have cancer. And then I've heard many things about it. Your hair fell out. Uh, it could make you, you know, sick for years and years and years. And so I talked to the doctors and I said, I really don't want my hair to fall out. So could I have the lower dosage of the chem therapy? And let's see whether it does what it's supposed to do. And I don't need to take the harder part. And I think they looked at me like I was weird. But what I had asked for was not crazy. It could be done. And they did it. And my hair never fell out. And so that way I could move along through the system. And I had learned something vital. I had learned two things. I had learned you could negotiate with some doctors and carry the world with it. And the other thing I learned was you should never be afraid to learn from what seems terrible. Because very often, the next time when something feels good, back up and get over. I had had one child, and I had noticed that me and other women were all of color. And the other women didn't go into those same places. So I said, hmm. So I wrote a letter to the head of the director of the hospital and said, are you discriminating? Because I'm about to have another baby and I'm not gonna have it in your hospital if you are. And I got a letter back, which I can probably find someday, which said, Ms. Ms. Jackson, we would never think of doing anything like that. And so the next time when I went in to deliver the baby, one of the nurses came in and said, I knew somebody was gonna talk about that one day. I knew that was going to happen. All right. The next thing that happened, the nurse came in and said, for God's sakes, don't put that woman in room seven. After that, there was no discrimination at the hospital. All by myself, without that special intent, it stopped. So that's one of the things, I'm not so proud of it. I'm startled by it, but I'm pleased that I did it. So I would say that my parents taught me a number of things that I would never have learned no matter what course I took. One of them was understand the very question you're asking me, who you are. You know, it isn't that you came from poor people or from folks who didn't know anything or were mean. Yeah, some people are mean, but we can't blame that on how they look. And oh, by the way, there is nothing biologically as race. So let's look at this picture a little wider. Hmm. If your parents teach you to question without being a pain in the butt, you become the kind of person that other people like to be with. Because together you might find an answer that wouldn't have been there for only one of you. If that happens, you then have a friend those people who know me well, know me well. They're not getting somebody who's sort of like somebody who ought to be like something else. If I think something's wrong, you can be sure you're gonna hear it from me first. If I think something has happened and you were wronged, I want to soothe, I want to help. I want to be sure because I am another human being to reduce whatever that pain brought. And so I want my legacy to be Barbara was crazy, but she was a good old girl. And the other thing is, you never really knew what she knew. She was so much smarter than we thought, and I'm glad I knew her.